which is always fun with YouTube. Gotta go check our channel. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Um, we are live, season two, episode one. Sorry for the weird. Sorry for the weird. Go live. This is one of the strange things about YouTube. We're working on everybody, uh, but I'm here today with my incredibly patient and uh, also a father co-host. Both of us, between our loads of children, are having madness in our homes today. So um, expect maybe to hear a bit of noise, maybe some screams. Um, you know, hopefully no blood will actually splatter on the screen. <laughs> Although we, that might get more, uh, uh, that might get more uh, uh, interested viewers. I don't know uh, the the throwdown in the in the house. But uh, but Kyle, over to you to kind of bring us in today and uh, tell us how things are going as we get started. Uh, I think we have a bunch of new things to talk about today: upcoming events, new tools, some changes coming to the website. I mean, we've got loads of stuff to get into today. Excellent. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. And thanks so much, Kent. So as Ken said, welcome back to Digitized. Unlock your digital potential. Uh, this is the first episode of season two. And we're very excited to go even deeper in season two than we did in season one. Season one was all around setting context around the importance of unlocking your digital potential and getting digitized for yourself um, in your own personal life as well as your business life. And we spent, you know, eight, eight, we had eight shows as well as all of our pre-roll shows. So there's a ton of content for season one for you to go back and reflect on where we really dug in deep and talked about a bunch of different theories and principles, tools, frameworks, methodologies for you to start embracing, unlocking your digital potential. For season two, over the next eight episodes, over the next eight weeks, we're going to be going really deep or deeper into specific tools and functions to start empowering you even further so that you take even more action. What we've been inundated with, which has been very exciting, is really strong feedback uh, requests. And where we tested out a few things, Ken put up some really great tutorials on very specific technologies uh that people could use there's been an overwhelming response on that and people actually activating on those and so because of that we're going to be going even deeper in season two and empowering you uh even further so we're very very excited to get started as ken said we've got an action-packed agenda today and we're just getting ourselves um into it where we want to try and cover a few different things always empower you with a new tool and go deeper we've got something really cool which is for those of you that are watching that are in business. We've also built out a digitized roadmap, which is all around helping to guide you almost in a facilitated way to unlock your potential. We've got some new events coming up that we are continually producing, our inbound in terms of producing events based on the success of season one and the, the growth of digitized has been phenomenal. And we'll be able to talk more about those as they start to unfold. So absolutely action packed. And very excited. So, Kent, where should we start today? Would you um, would you love to jump in and give people the good news about the events first? Yeah, let's do and that. We can, and we can, well, yeah. a couple of housekeeping things. Number one, we are, as always, testing something new today. Uh, so I've got a chat tool that allows me to monitor all the chats for all the channels where we're live. So if somebody out there uh, communicates to us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Twitch, or on YouTube, I should, I should see it in the chat and be able to aggregate and respond to all of those. That's an experiment for today. If it doesn't work, well, that's just how it goes. Sometimes experiments don't work. Uh, the second thing um, uh, to talk about is what you mentioned is kind of upcoming events. So Digitize does produce events and uh, the reason we test all of this stuff on ourselves, we make ourselves the guinea pig is so we know what best to roll out down the line. So on May 12th, uh, there's an event coming up called EXO World Live, uh, or I should say EXO World Now. 
And you can find out about that at exoworld.live slash now. I'll put the link underneath in a moment. But the point of that is it's going to be the second EXO World event, and the first one was incredible fun. Uh, we used a venue uh, for that particular event called Hopin, and Hopin allowed us to allow the attendees to create their own sessions, to visit expo booths, to, um, to network with one another. We had one attendee who made over 120 high-quality connections and booked meetings right on the spot. And he says he's kept himself busy for weeks after the event. And this is why you go to events. You go to events to learn and to network. And so things like that, pretty amazing. I mean, we, we were blown away uh, by how that worked out. And that's just one of the choices uh, of kind of, we think of it as, an, as a digital event venue uh, out there. Uh, so, and we talked, I think, last week, Kyle, about some different types of venues. So, mm -hmm. anybody that wants to revisit that can go back to last week's live show, uh, season one, episode uh, eight, I think that was. Eight, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's sort of what's coming up next. And, you know, we can't let the cat out of the bag yet, but we've got a really exciting one coming up in June as well uh, that I, I'm, I'm super excited about because it's going to be... Uh, I just I don't think anybody in that particular vertical has ever experienced anything like this in their space. So it's going to be a whole new world of fun, and and the main stage on that event will be also produced by Digitized Live. So, Kyle, those are the ones that I can think of right off the top. Uh, mm -hmm. Are there anything Excellent. you want to add? Uh, not from big digital productions. I know that I'm uh, getting to talk about mastering creative problem solving for a, a group called the Growth Faculty on May 19th, Australia time, May 18th, um, uh, San Francisco time or, or New York time, which is all about mastering creative problem solving. And I'll be bringing some of those the tools and tricks that we're learning here about how to digitize that into that talk. But we could put some links down into the show notes for that one, but that should be good. But the big events are the ones that we were super excited about. And um, there is, as I mentioned, there's a lot of inbound. So as the show continues, we'll be sharing with you some of the things and the approaches, the types of events, the types of requests that our um, client partners are making of us and uh, the problem solving that we're doing in real time and how we actually get these really interesting solutions. Because what's, what's been fascinating with this is when people see the possibilities, what I love is that it's sparking people's imagination about what else they can think of. And so what's kind of cool for Kent and myself um, and, and the digitized team is they'll say, well, could we also do this? I, I would like to create this type of experience. I would like to have this type of a, you know, these speakers come in in this way or produce in this way. Like there's a, a potentially an event that may be happening in November for us, um, a, a large company event. And what's fascinating is they're already experimenting with the idea of how do they on their side curate different audiences inside of uh, green screen rooms so that we can do more interesting effects on this side. So that's all down the line, but we'll get into those things, but there's some really good things that are coming up and it's exciting for us because I would imagine that the next eight weeks is going to be wild and exciting. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, Kyle, I was thinking uh, one of the things that you did last week uh, for Digitize was you put together a new tool. Uh, and mm -hmm. one of the things that we hear again and again and again is, well, how do I do this? What things mm -hmm. do I need to think about? Just what do I do next? What's the next step? Uh, I think mm -hmm. it would be great, uh, and what we'll do uh, is um, we'll get that tool posted over on the website at a mm -hmm. URL. It'll be called digitized.live slash S2E1, so all lowercase. Again, I'll put the links uh, below, but I think maybe introducing our audience to that tool uh, would be a wonderful mm -hmm. next step today. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, well, just out of interest, would you be projecting that in the background or I'll just talk through it? Um, we'll just talk through it. Uh, we'll just, just talk, talk through it. it. Yeah. Uh, okay. We'll see I'll, if you I'll work any magic link, on the I'll back I'll put end. up a link to the... Yeah. Well, keep in mind, we just posted a video Yeah. Uh, That's right. on Monday. Uh, so reference that. People can go look at the video. That's better than a static image on the background anyway. Perfect. Yeah, so thanks for that. So um, have a look back in the YouTube page at this video that we're going to be talking about. So this is a what we were calling our, our digitized roadmap. 
or our digitized transformation roadmap, which is which is really a guide that we've put together to get you to think about certain key questions. And we've done it in a canvas form, meaning that it's a one pager. Each each section of the canvas you can go really deep in and it requires work and it requires you to do some thoughtful work and make notes and figure out what you need. But putting it into a single canvas allows you to put the highlights so that you can see your total journey. It helps to facilitate you across the total journey of what you need to do in different areas of your business uh, in order to get yourself digitized, unlock that digital potential and build a roadmap for you so you know how to then share that with others so that you can share your vision. So the way that this works is it's got nine particular boxes to it and just really high level because you can check out the video. The very first thing that we, in our work with our clients, the very first thing we're doing is getting you to imagine the future. Imagine the future where if you're thinking about your current state today, you're trying to imagine and visualize yourself in a future where you are already running effectively in a digital environment. And this is where creativity and imagination is super important. Going out to the future, even if you don't know how to do it now, you want to let your imagination run wild. You want to let your creativity run wild, just like for us. So for Kent and I, one of the just to use us as a real live example is when we did this this roadmap for ourselves. Um, and there's a whole th bunch of different sort of micro versions of it, and then macro versions of it, like a big picture. I am a uh, a live events company, and I go out to hotels and I book rooms, and I have speakers come physically to a location, and they stand on stage, and audiences are all in contained in the same room. That's what we call our physical or our analog experience. We're all present in the same space. The digitization version of that, of course is everything that we're doing right here. It's I will log online. I will go into a online digital destination. Those rooms are going to be different links that I may go to. Inside of those links, uh, it may have audio, it may have video, it may have motion graphics, it may have you know, all those kinds of things. Maybe there's a networking function, uh, which could be chat streams versus being able to physically walk into a hallway and shake hands with someone. These are all ideas where you're taking a physical experience and you turning it into a digital experience. So what we want to do is imagine the future. If it's your business, maybe you are a store and you're selling products and you've never thought to go online. Um, you know, what is the digital version of your store? You know, potentially you are uh, like one example right now is that, you know, airline companies and uh, cruise line tour operators are, you know, in a difficult position but there's been a massive explosion of virtual tours. Uh, I just went to see the Palace of Versailles over the weekend. <laughs> I didn't physically go there, uh, but I went, I went there digitally, right? So that's digitizing. So, and what was very interesting for ourselves and the family is that we can now say, well, we wanted to go and visit Europe and now we can visit Europe. That's the, the digital version. It doesn't obviously beat the real thing, but it's a really close and very intimate second you know, opportunity. So when we talk about the future, you want to think about and imagine what is it that you would like to experience for yourself in your business? What would you like to experience um, your customers to have experience? And imagine that being fully in a digitized or a digital way. And you let your imagination run wild. The second and third blocks are around what kind of business outcomes would you like to achieve when you are operating in that future? What, and if you have a team of people and you're building a brand and a culture, what kind of cultural outcomes? What kind of company would you like to be building? What kind of customers would you like to have? What is the projection and energy that you want to put out into the world through this idea of shifting from where you are to where you want to be? And once we've done those, we come back to our current state. Okay, so that's all living in the future. Then we come back to our current state and say, okay, so where am I in relation to that today? I have to be honest, be super realistic. I don't really know much about tech. I, I don't have the infrastructure in place. Uh, I may not have you know, technology teams uh, or I haven't even started to do the groundwork to think about what that might be. I'm not quite sure how to attract customers to myself but because everything is happening in the way you've always done business. So get realistic about your current state and then the rest of the, the roadmap is looking at what are the shifts that we need to make to bridge us from where we are to where we want to be. And it breaks it down into how would you lead and manage your business and your teams? 
how would you start to actually skill up yourself and your teams and the, and your your customers to be able to make this migration with you? Are there any things you have to shift differently with your process and structures um, inside of the business? Maybe you have to rethink a business model. Maybe you have to shift the way that you sell your products, all those kinds of things. It starts to help guide you on just being thoughtful about these different things. And then the very last area that it's left you with is who do you need help from? So what audiences are going to help you make your migration successful? And so what that really does is it because when you're making a digital shift, and this is something Kent and I, and, and I'll open up for Kent as well, just to dig in on some of these areas, is when you are unlocking your digital potential and you're making your digital shift, it is, is going to open you up to want to connect with new audiences. Technology is evolving on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, yesterday morning I was uh, part of a mastermind and they were focusing on technology, it just happened to be focusing on technology. And on that, a whole bunch of new tools I'd never even heard of popped up. And those have just been launched. And, and it's very interesting how they're, they're pushing up against things we've already got used to. And this is a, just in a few weeks, it's already changing. And so you want to surround yourself with the right people to give you real-time perspective. And you also want to be able to link with the people that are going to help you make your shift from where you are to where you want to be successful. And so that in a nutshell is the roadmap. We go future, we go current, we look at the gaps and we figure out the bridges that we need to make. And then we look at the support that we need uh, in order to make those bridges. And, and then you've got your actions and your action steps are now from those, from those bridges, those become your action steps. I can start working on these things in real time. So that's a quick overview of that. You can go real deep. It's been facilitated by us. Um, it's something you can pause and reflect on. The questions are all there and ready to go, and that's all going to be uploaded for you. And if you've got questions and feedback, if you're getting some success from it, we would obviously love to hear from you because uh, it's very important for us. We wanted to provide as much value as possible and empower you and get you to unlock your potential. Uh, and if there's something else that you would want to go deep on or you have another question related to that, please, please, please get in touch. So that's an overview of our digital roadmap, which is a free, res free resource for you and your teams. Um, in, and you'll see the video and you'll see the downloads in the, the show notes as well. Yeah. So uh, while you were talking, thank you for, for that, Kyle. I've been actually trying to go ahead and put it online so people Great. can get it. So by the end of the show, I'll have it there. It may not be the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but we can always, uh, we can always dress it up later. Uh, and that way people will be able to just go straight there uh, mm -hmm. and access the tool and download it. Uh, that, I think, is the way we should do these things. Um, yeah. One of the things that you said at the beginning of the show was we always try to make sure that we're delivering value and processes and tools that people can use from every show. This is one of our primary goals of doing this. And so you've just shared a new tool that literally we created um, based on all of our experiences talking to uh, clients, potential clients, just people in the world who want help in many cases. Um, and a few days ago, I don't remember exactly. I think it was over the weekend. I posted a new uh, a new video uh, that's, that's right. starting to really pick up, and I'll talk about that just a little bit. So there is a pretty amazing uh, tool out there that's come on the scene. If you do any kind of video work or audio work, like a podcast or a a, a video style podcast like this show, you always get stuck at some point editing. Uh, and editing is, is, is seriously not fun <laughs> for almost anybody. I guess there are people out there that truly love that. It's not my most happy place, but I, I do it. And this particular tool is called Descript, D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T. And I'm mentioning this one specifically because it's an absolute game changer. I mean, Descript will fundamentally off, uh, alter Descript will fundamentally alter the workflow uh, that you have for processing your audio and digital files, no matter how you're distributing and broadcasting them, I think. And one of the interesting things about the tools, they just added a new feature uh, where you can literally talk directly into Descript and it transcribes automatically. And then you can edit that transcript, the audio and the video, uh, if, if, you, if you want. 
uh, at the same time. And, and that's just, well, let me check myself on the uh, streaming the video in. Definitely the audio, but I gotta go back and check. But I recorded an entire video on this. Uh, it is really coming up in the in the views, so you should definitely go over to the YouTube uh, video list and find that. It's just a couple of days old and it should be there. The other thing that I wanted to mention was this channel in general. Uh, one of the things that we're looking for, of course, is feedback, and we try all kinds of different things. So we are probably going to experiment uh, with taking all the clips we do uh, and possibly pushing those to a separate medium. Uh, maybe we'll send all of our clips and tips over to uh, Instagram or Facebook mm -hmm. or something else. I, I don't even think we've decided yet, but the idea there is that we're, we want to make sure also that the viewers of this channel uh, are, are getting what they need from us. So Kyle, that's something you and I just talked about, and it's a tip I got from another YouTuber's channel. Um, if I can, I think I saved that link. I can also post that in the show notes because you know uh, all of this is about sharing and sending people where you learn and, and learning together. So we'll, we'll post that in there too. But I thought it was a fantastic tip as well. And lastly, uh, as I said, and I, I'm sorry it won't look super pretty if you're literally watching us live and you go there right now, um, it won't look super pretty, but you can get the file. Uh, uh, it's called um, digitize.live slash roadmap uh, is where I've put that. So I'm in the last stages of editing the webpage. So go ahead, Kyle, and, and uh, what do you think we've got next for today? Yeah, um, so this is all all really good. So the and I was we haven't had a chance to chat about this yet, Kim. But one of the things that I was told about yesterday is a new product, which I'm sure you're going to dive in and just you know really really uh, uh, go deep on it. Is called Grain, G R A I N, and Grain. You know, it's it seems seems kind of a new thing. What it is is that's actually um, it's almost like a descript descript or or otter tool but it is uh, specifically an, an embedded tool for Zoom. So what happens is instead of recording a Zoom call and then going to take those files uh, and then putting it in Descript or putting it in, in Otter or, or recording at the same time in Otter, you can actually plug it in and it runs a transcript inside of Zoom in real time, which is something I haven't had a chance to play with it. I just saw a tiny little preview of it. And I was ex in planning on on experimenting with it today. But it, what it's interesting for us is, and Kent, you know, you and I are seeing this in real time. Is that is that as these tools are being developed and the forcing function of this shift to a digitized way of working and living, uh, it's interesting that the independence of separate tools there's this convergence that's happening. So there's even you know like, oh, how do you now take this and plug this thing? How do you take this feature that was a whole different separate business or business model? And how do you plug it in and integrate these different things? So I'm very excited. It got me thinking yesterday just about, wow, I, I wonder one day if we do a futurist episode just on where do we see um, convergence going of the types of tools and systems right now that are all separate pieces. Where, where would we imagine convergence going? Could be a really fascinating one. And I would love to always see where your mind goes on that, Ken, because, um, you know, you're always at the forefront of this technology. But that, that for me was just another example of convergence. You know, instead of two separate things, integrate them, um, which is going to be interesting. Well, you know, for a while, uh, I think you and I talked about this, but as soon as I started using Descript heavily, uh, I stopped using Otter very much mm, because I was, doing, right. I was doing the same thing. I was downloading the files from Zoom and then uploading them to Otter and then sharing those or using those trans transcripts in all kinds of ways. And I've been finding some very interesting ways to use the Descript transcripts, as you know. Talked about mm -hmm. that in the video. Go there, see yeah. that. It's the, a great um, video. Yeah, that was really, really amazing, some of the ways that you can use the timestamps. But what I also was doing with Otter, and I actually still do, I kind of considered a, almost a backup in a way, uh, is uh, you can integrate Otter directly with Zoom from the back end using Zoom integrations so that every mm. Zoom meeting that you do uh, will actually automatically upload to Otter and then Otter will transcribe that and then you'll get a link from Otter shortly thereafter saying your transcript is ready. And then as you know on Otter, and we're, we're talking about otter.ai by the way, which is a... Mm -hmm. the, 
pretty amazing. One of the reasons I used it over everything else that could possibly do AI transcriptions, even though I had other tools, was because the transcriptions were so good. Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> since I've started using Descript, I have found myself uh, using the Descript transcriptions. I don't know. I know that Descript has a third party relationship with another AI translation or transcripting company on the back end. I don't know what that is. If I ever find mm -hmm. out, I'll, I'll share it. But uh, mm -hmm. maybe they don't want me to know. I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> maybe not. But the point is that, you know, things like the quality of the transcript come into play. But exactly to your point, when it's just mm -hmm. all there for you, uh, why do you want to use three tools when you can use mm -hmm. one? And I think this is this game of one-upmanship. And we're seeing That's right. that dramatically accelerate as a result of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 is a forcing function for the rapid uptake, expansion, and improvement of what we think of as exponential technologies, the implementation of AI, the implementation of machine, uh, well, AI, machine learning, uh, streaming is exploding. I mean, oh I my mean, goodness, it, it's insane. So, so that's kind of to your point about convergence and integration. What's interesting here is that it's always kind of a shame when you have this sort of, I'll call it a Tower of Babel moment. Uh, you know, we're all speaking the same language one moment, and then all of a sudden there's 50 tools, 50 APIs, and everything's yeah. fractured and fragmented. That's not necessarily good, but the standards bodies, which are all driven by governments, don't typically move fast enough to be mm -hmm. able to keep up with the pace of technological change. So you end up in this fractured environment, and it looks kind of like this, it gets big and then it gets small, and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and it ebbs and flows. And there's some sort of cadence to that, that, um, that the whole tech industry, the whole, and now the whole global uh, economy <laughs> is, mm -hmm. is going through in a tough way. So I yeah. don't know. Those are some of the things that I think right off the top about, about that. Yeah, there's. I, I wanted to bring up something else that I saw yesterday, and you might have a, a bigger perspective on this. I, a colleague shared a, a Zoom call that they had received, uh, that they were a part of. And what was interesting is in the sidebar of the Zoom call was usually when you get a recording back, if you've recorded your Zoom call to the cloud or to your desktop, what will happen is once it's been processed, it spits you back and it says, oh, download two files or download three files. And one is usually an audio file and one is usually the video file with the audio obviously integrated. What was interesting is he said for the first time he got something back that said download four files. And he was like, I don't, this is interesting. What is this? Oh, yeah. And and what he saw was that in the sidebar of chat, there were now two, uh, there were two streams. One was that Zoom actually has, and I'm wondering if it's the auto integration, Zoom actually has an integrated transcription as well as the chat and so you said transcript and there was a two there were two toggles there there were two tabs in the chat stream one said um transcription and the other said chat and because i was like well that seems like it's a chat and he says no look at look at this thing and so i went and just looked last night and i noticed that there was a very it seemed quite quiet but there was a there was a press release launch from zoom saying that at the end of 2019 they had built in an integrated AI functionality to do transcriptions in real time in a Zoom meeting. I just never heard of it and I'd never, yeah. seen, the, I'd, I'd never seen it. And I don't know if that's an enterprise setting or if that's a pro setting or if that's like something that we just don't get to see or if there's another one of those many toggles in the back end when you're working your Zoom preferences. But that was fascinating. I was wondering, have you seen that before? Absolutely, I've used it. We integrated it at one of the companies that I'm where I'm a co-founder. Uh, mm. some time ago so that we could auto transcribe all of our team meetings. The downside mm. in our case was that uh, we are an incredibly global team with many, many accents. And so uh, the, uh, the AI is not were, picking that up yet. <laughs> the transcriptions were entertaining to say the least, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, and, and um, it's like one of those pre predictive text you know, mishaps, you know, when somebody sends you a predictive yeah, text message. It's, yeah. it's exactly like that. And it was really quite funny uh, at the end of the day. But I think that um, it's an amazing integration. And yes, you get to that by going to the back end of Zoom and finding the integrations tab and activating the necessary service, mm. which is a third party integration with Zoom. And then what happens is during your actual call, 
it, it will literally auto transcribe the everything into a, a, a separate kind of chat area uh, and then mm. that also becomes part of your downloads later to the point mm. yeah interesting fascinating well it's just you know i'm learning in real time as we all are just things that are happening and um you just gave me a fun idea um mm -hmm. so I, i've been thinking about this and i have no idea how this would work out but maybe it could be a fun part of these shows the live show in particular um what about just throwing it up on a screen uh and the, the, oh, i'm so watching it <laughs> well just do it like we would just yeah. literally, you know you know how i do the pre-recordings of tools and things and yeah i could just like coach you through using a tool or if you try something new you coach me through using a tool like I don't like Adobe Premiere. You do. You can teach me if you wanted to how to do a few True. things here and there. I mean, I, maybe that would be interesting for our audiences. And mm. it would certainly at times be entertaining because I can promise you things don't always work when you do them live. But maybe that's okay. Uh, it could be fun. I, I like that. I think that's especially for our season two about going deep. So we could we could pick out a couple of things and really push on that. I was also thinking what I connected to, as you said, that first was that we actually have in the background, we actually watch these AI tools transcribing our show, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. in, in real time. So you could actually see the, you know, the, it would be very interesting if there's like a comparison window, like you have a... What? You have auto and you have Descript and you have like these things and actually who like we have a we have a AI face off <laughs> and see whether an AI transcription oh, face off gosh. and see who's actually who's actually better based on the fact that I have a South African accent. You've got a Bostonian accent. I think it's Boston, right? Uh, no, it's Kentucky. Oh, sorry, Kentucky, Kentucky. That's right. Not Kentucky, sorry, my shows. I'm from Africa. I can't even. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Africa. That's right, Kentucky. Yeah. Yo, no, no. I, I uh, my, my accent has been shifted a little bit over time because I've moved around a bit, as have you. And so I, uh, but yeah, the, the native thing. If, if we ever do a show where we're actually, uh, you know, not for the kids, having some drinks, and mine is bourbon. It all comes back, and, and you'll, get the, you'll get the full on. You'll get the full on Kentucky boy. <laughs> nice. No, that's excellent. So um, the other thing that we were going to touch on briefly was um, the. I think you have mentioned it a couple times, and was was just mentioning to about your loopback. Um, as well, that loopback tool, and then you've got your D, you've got your Descript tool. We've got our digital roadmap tool. So we're going to be putting more tools out there. And if there's something for the viewers, if there's something that you would like to see us review, test out, or go deep on, if there is something that you are um, struggling with, or if there's something you want to get demystified, uh, we always know there's a ton of content out there um, on YouTube, and even the forcing function of COVID has forced technology companies to do a much better job. I've noticed that a much better job of them reshooting videos right now or doing demos or running free webinars. Like I was just on a webinar last week with um, seeing all the updates of a creative platform called Miro, M-I-R-O, that I think we've talked about in some previous episodes. I, I, I use Miro extensively. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I know you do too. Well, we talked yeah. about that quite a few times. That might be a good one to review too, because I'm now getting text messages almost on the daily from colleagues and businesses saying, "Should I use Miro? Should I use Mural? Should I use Innovision? Should I use, you know, like what what do you, what do you do to facilitate in a digital environment?" So that should be an exciting one as well. Yeah. To go deep. Um, but I just wanted to see if you wanted to touch again on uh, the loopback one, sure. just to just to direct people for seeing that this is all about going deeper. Well, I can give you a little update too. I mean, the most amazing thing to me, and I, I think this is a lesson for us, right? It's a lesson for us that I got. Um, I was, I'll, I'll tell this story briefly again, and then I'll give an update on the video. I, I was walking through my family room one day. My wife was taking a Zumba class over Zoom, of course because that's what we all do now, if you take Zumba classes. And I just noticed that the audio was not good. <laughs> you know, it sounded tenny and far away, and she was kind of struggling to hear it and, you know, do her thing. And, and I was like, that's, that could totally be better. Um, I know there's a way 
to feed the audio into Zoom and sync it with an instructor's microphone over a wireless headset so that basically she's kind of wired up like she would be uh, when you go on a big stage or something, you know, and they, they wire you up and then you walk on stage with your nice headset. And I started doing the research and I found a tool uh, called Loopback. Uh, and I ended up using this tool a lot. In fact, when I did the Descript video that I just published over the weekend, I used Loopback to feed the audio uh, that was coming out of Descript back into our broadcasting software and out to the recording for that. So I was literally now a compounding tools, right? I couldn't have made that video even remotely that efficiently previously without being able to directly feed the loopback audio output into the broadcast um, encoding software so that I could effectively live record to disk. I wasn't actually broadcasting out to the internet in that case. And uh, um, the funnest thing about this whole part is that all I wanted to do was just help my wife have a slightly better uh, experience with her online fitness classes because I know she misses going to the studio in person mm -hmm. uh, and then help her teacher uh, potentially connect better with her students. That is all I wanted. And, and, and so I just literally I walked right out of the family room that evening into my studio. I recorded that video one take uh, and then I sent it out. That video, Kyle, is our very first video to ever crack 2,000 views. And yeah. um, I'm, I just, I am amazed and shocked. And if you go and read the comments on there, uh, they're just, they're just awesome. Like it feels really good to have helped mm -hmm. people because other instructors share it with other instructors now. And mm -hmm. so it's just, it's kind of taken on a life of its own there. Uh, and I've become tech support for a world of, uh, of fitness instructors through the chat. <laughs> but, but it's okay. I, I like it. It's, it's really good. And, and, I'm, and I'm hoping, of course, that people find the Descript because so many people are streaming now. Uh, that yeah. A tool like Descript that shaves hours off your post time, you want that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Well, you know, as we are coming up to our 45 minute mark here and um, uh, getting to the, the end of our season two, episode one kickoff, I'll do a quick recap as we always love to recap and, and Kent also jump in here just if I miss anything. But as a recap for today, it's we loaded you up with a bunch of really cool things to direct you to some important points. So a few things. You've got a few new tools available to you. You have what Kent just shared with you, which is you know, a exponentially growing audience base for the, the loopback, which is, again, cracking the code on how do you make your Zoom experiences even better. And, you know, the fitness world has really embraced this and there will be many others that are following suit. I would imagine that live parties, I would imagine that if you're running, you know, um, office, office gatherings, if you are doing your sessions and you want to bring more mood and tone, watch that video. Uh, Kent does an incredible job to help you crack the code, demystify it, and really make it easy to integrate for you. The second one is uh, Ken's tool around Descript. Uh, this is a very, very powerful tool. If you are looking to and now produce a lot more content, um, a ton more content, go in and do this one because what's really cool about it, as Kent mentioned, you can take existing recordings or even record into it, which he also cracked the code on there, and it will transcribe it for you. You can edit the transcription. It will also automatically edit the video for you. And then you can even cut pieces and clips out of it and save those things and then send and shoot to, um, you know, you can, you can send those formats out to audio files, to video files, all that kind of good stuff. So really, really important. And then the third one is our roadmap tool that we just talked to you about which is that if you are looking to, and there's a link there, yeah, that's right, there's a link right there, so you can download it for free. This is um, a facilitated guide for you uh, in the video and then the downloadable worksheet that will help for you to at least get some questions and think of this as us kind of embedding with you and actually giving you some, some consulting time, which is to say these are the types of questions we would go deep on. Obviously, we would spend a lot more time with you, but this is just one way for you to get kick-started, to start navigating and thinking about your journey, your digital journey. So click the link below. Feel free to share that with, with others and your teams. Uh, and if you've got any 
questions about those, you know, get in touch. And then the other thing that we hit you guys up with is we've got a big event coming up, as Kent mentioned. So there'll be some show notes that is EXO World Now. Uh, and Kent, that is 12th of May, right? It is the 12th of May. 12th of May. So there'll be ways for you to get uh, tickets uh, to that one. The first, you know, that's off the back of the three day, super, super successful. Now we've got even a more action packed one, keeping those cadences going. You'll see our handy production. That's great. There's another link below. You'll see our handiwork in, in production there. And then we've got some other really cool events and speaking series. So look out on social. You'll see that Kent and I are going to be out and about speaking on different engagements uh showing up in different places when we're not in the back in, in the background helping produce we're now coming also more to the forefront as people are asking to demystify some things and empower some things so ken over to you i have an idea totally just yeah. came to me while you were talking if you see that link there exoworld.live slash now and somehow you also see this show and this part of this show i will give away five free tickets courtesy of digitize live uh you'll get a you've got to contact us and and come find us email us chat with us whatever just five there's only five first come first serve uh i'll give that away it's a it'll be a hundred percent off coupon one time use uh to attend exo world live slash now and see uh, a digitized main stage production in the hop in event venue uh and if there's super strong demand for that then uh, we'll, we'll talk about it, but I'm willing to do that. I, I have uh, I have those that I can give away, uh, and we've never done that before, Kyle. So that's a new thing. It's a it's a giveaway. Hey, uh, we've seen that we're in such a giver mood. I could I could throw <laughs> something else out there too. We've got that we've got that uh, talk about um, Martin creative uh, creative problem solving, and uh, if anybody does get to watch this, same kind of thing. And you get in touch and you use the word growth. Let's use the word growth. Uh, we'll be able to get you a 50% discount um, to the tickets to that uh, to that talk as well. So we can do that here too. So lots of free giveaways. <laughs> first try, first time we've ever tried this, folks. Give us feedback. You know, I think that I think that's a good thing to do, right? If we have access to something, Kyle, that can help people digitize right. their lives, unlock their digital potential, we should share that as much as we can. Awesome. Well, what a great start to our season two. And as you know, we are here, Digitize Live, we are here to help you unlock your digital potential and take you, your organization and your lives to the next level by empowering you with technology and helping activate your potential. So for myself and Kent, we are so grateful to have your viewership please do uh, subscribe if you haven't already please click a like to these things it helps to get us into all the algorithms please share this with others if you see tools and techniques and methodologies and specials and giveaways and free resources uh, that empower you and your your colleagues um, do share and we will see you again next week thank you so very much for your time thank you Kyle signing off